Hey guys, it is Hearts, and today I'll be breaking down this 10-game NBA slate we have here on DraftKings for Wednesday night. I'll be talking through some of my favorite core plays and top picks based on the injury news we have so far. Make sure to stay updated with me on Twitter at HeartDFS. Follow my free Patreon link down below. Hit that like button, and I'll see you guys in the slate breakdown. Quick little lineup review for you guys here. Uh, missed catch by like 13. Just super frustrating because we get guys like Tyler Hero, who shoots literally 4 of 19. Herb Jones... Missed a whole quarter, more than a quarter due to foul trouble. Didn't play in the third quarter. He only had 24 minutes. A guy usually sees 14, or excuse me, 34 to like 38 minutes. So he missed like three or four shifts there because of massive foul trouble. He had 16 fancy points in the first quarter. So that screwed me. Everyone else was great. Um, and then Strew screwed me. 18 fancy points in the first quarter. Only finishes with 28, you know, 10 the next three quarters. That's brutal. And then Thomas Bryant, I just... I, had, I was just stuck in this price range. I should have just paid up somewhere else. Um, you know, I should have just paid down for Derek White here, been able to pay up for someone else here over Thomas Bryant. And yeah, it, it, it just screwed me. I, I did not like playing Bryant there. I knew it wasn't going to work out, and it didn't. So yeah, that was just super frustrating. Very annoying night because, once again, just barely missed catch. If you want to see the winning lineup in the 15, or this is the single entry, uh, they split, but it was Pritchard, White, uh, Denny, Le LeBron, Biombo, McConnell, Green, and Luca. So moving on to this 10 game slate here. Once again, stay updated with me on Twitter at HeartDFS and my free Patreon just to stay updated with the injury news because it will change some core plays. Also have a, a free slate right up out once again today. But for the Indiana side, they just played last night. Uh, Turner really turned it on in that third quarter for Indiana. He looks very solid. The price tag hasn't moved. A decent spot versus Orlando Magic here. Buddy Heald, once again, looks very solid. You know, he's going to play a ton of minutes. He's going to shoot the ball a ton. Did get seven stocks, so that really helped out his fancy score there. Uh, what, 14 extra points? But yeah, I mean, he looks decent. McConnell, once again, the price tag hasn't changed. The minutes are just huge on him, so really like him, uh, even against this taller team of Orlando. Benedict Matherin, I think these guys are all in play. As we saw last night, I mean, if Benedict Matherin is probably the least favorite one for me just because he is score independent, but we all know they have a ceiling if they're playing well and this game's going to stay close. Now, if Nemhard is back, uh, it does take out some interest for McConnell for me. Like, if McConnell's going to come off the bench, uh, he's less of a priority there at 6,000. I don't think there's a need to play him. But if he's going to start again, do love him. If Nemhard's Martin's going to play and start, I do like him a good amount. It's 4,700. You know, he should be in for a big amount of minutes. Naismith, you can get to him. I mean, 30 minutes for him is decent. I don't mind that. Um, Duarte, kind of the same thing. But if Nemhard's back, his minutes are more in flux. I don't think there's a need to get to him. And there's no really not a need to get to these uh, bigger guys. Like Terry Taylor did good in his minutes out there, but it's really just kind of the main starters for me, and that's it. Orlando side, I like Paolo a good amount here. I mean, it, it's not looking like he's a normal one option right now on this team. It's kind of been Franz the past few games, but he should see in a close game, mid-30s minutes, you know, he's going to be aggressive. So I do like him there at 7,000. The price tag has finally come down to a very, very appealing uh, target. Franz has been the most aggressive and most involved in this offense past few games. Wendell, I do like his price tag a good amount here. I'm not going to shoot the ball a ton, but he still has double-double upside. So I do like these the main three. Uh, Fultz looks decent. You know, a solid matchup here going against a smaller guard in either Nemhard or McConnell. Uh, so I don't mind him. Cole Anthony, you know, he's just more of a GPP play. He can get you there in about mid-20s minutes, or he can burn you. So at that price tag, it's not like a real priority, just more of a GPP dart throw. And then Isaac, once this dude gets is off a minutes limit, uh, I'm going to jam him into every lineup until he's like 6, 7, 8K because that's the upside he has. He's an absolute beast, beast at stuffing the stat sheets, can do literally everything. So, I mean, 20 fantasy points in 10 minutes, that, that's kind of his output. Not Obviously, not gonna be, it's not going to be two for the whole season, but he's definitely going to be like a 1.3, 1.4 fantasy point per minute kind of guy, even on this crowded uh, front court for Orlando. Moving on to Brooklyn and Philadelphia. No KD, so Kyrie is going to be leading the team. He's really stepped it up the past few games here. Um, let me get back to him. Yeah, really stepped it up. Minutes, should see about 40. He's going to shoot the ball a ton. Uh, it just really comes down if he's hitting the shots. If he is, I mean, look at his upside. 61, 83, 62. Uh, but there is big blowout risk here going against Philadelphia. Uh, Claxton, I, I just can't trust him at that price tag going against Embiid, but he's been great recently as well. Simmons, revenge game here, but... I mean, he's upside. I just don't like the price tag. He's, his minutes are all over the place. There's really no standout options for me on this side right now. 
Maybe TJ Warren is like a value play, but his minutes have really dropped down. Joe Harris looks like an okay value play. His minutes are decent. Yeah, really no standout plays, maybe besides Kyrie. Boyce and Neal's a decent value. Uh, moving on to Philadelphia. If Embiid plays, uh, I love him here. Obviously a fantastic matchup against this uh, Nets front court. He looked like an absolute stud. Harden looks great here at 9-9. I uh, really like both of those guys. The rest of the team, just more secondary plays. Uh, Maxi, Harris, Melton. Sure, you can land on them. Don't really mind it. Um, but yeah, that's really going to be it. Uh, maybe a little bit of interest in Harris, but yeah, not a ton besides main two for Philadelphia. Moving on to Atlanta. Uh, Trey Young looks solid at his price tag. I mean, really hasn't flashed his ceiling, play, ceiling game since beginning of January, basically. And then since then, it's just been mid-40s, so he's been pretty mid. Uh, don't like playing this guy, but I mean, his price tag is dropping, and they're playing OKC, so could be a huge spot here for Trey. DeJounte has been you know, solid recently, so I don't mind the guards for Atlanta. Uh, the bigs, I do have a good amount of interest in Capella still. You know, he saw 36 minutes. We saw him put up a double-double. Should be another great spot here for Capella, so I really, really like him. With that double-double upside, he can get blocks as well, so he'd be my favorite. Uh, even if Okungwu is back, you know, I still love Capella. He should start. He should still see about 30 minutes, if not more. And then I'd say my second favorite would be a guy like Bogdan. Even if Hunter's back, you know, he should move to the, the bench, which it would really help him out just coming off the bench, getting hot. Uh, you know, he does have some upside there at 4,900. But as of right now, it's just going to be the guards and Capella for me. OKC okay, side, do like SGA. Giddy's price tag is just more. He's just kind of there for me. Not a real priority. I do have a good amount of interest in a guy like Jalen Williams just because the minutes should be mid-30s. He does have some solid upside, as you can see here. 30, 41, 38 at 5,400. Don't mind that. And yeah, that's really going to do it for me. You can get to Kendrick Williams if he's going to start. I mean, he's been solid in some of his fantasy outputs there at 4,300. But that's really going to be it for me. Moving on to Minnesota. Anthony Edwards looks very, very solid here against the Pelicans. D'Lo uh, had a, a decent game that last game, 49 fantasy points. Gobert is questionable. Obviously, if he's in, uh, he looks decent. If he's out, you know, could get to a Nas, Nas Reed, even though it's not the best matchup trying to guard uh, J. Val. That should be absolute weight room. No real standout plays for me uh, with kind of the main guys back. It's really just going to be Ant-Man iffy at that price tag, but D'Lo looks solid. Uh, and that's really it as of right now until we get that Gobert news. Moving on to the Pelican side. Uh, CJ looks solid. I mean, he's been bad recently. As you can see, 28, 19, 45 within 34, 30, 39. So he's on a little bit of a, a rough streak here. Uh, Brandon Ingram is back, but he should be limited to a certain amount, I would believe. If he's not limited, love him at that price tag. But if he's going to be limited, no real standouts for me besides maybe J. Val at his price tag, 7,300. Uh, an absolute fantastic spot here. If it's Gobert, J. Val looks okay. If it's Nas Reed, J. Val looks fantastic. Um, you know, Najee should be back. That means the front court, these wings are just okay. Like, you could still get to Herb Jones as a value play. Should see mid-30s even with... Uh, Brandon Ingram back, but yeah, not a lot of real standout plays for me on the Pelican side. Moving on to Denver, Jokic looks great here uh, in a tougher matchup. Jamal Murray looks solid. Gordon is more of a, a, a contrarian play, and that's really it. It's really just going to be the main three for me uh, on the Denver side. Nothing really changes. You know, it's kind of just target those main three. If you want to get risky, go to like maybe a Bruce Brown or a MPJ, but it's really just going to be uh, Jokic. Jamal Murray, and maybe Aaron Gordon if you're feeling, you know, slightly riskier in a GPP setting. Moving on to Milwaukee. Um, I mean, Drew, at that price tag, 8900 don't love that. Giannis, I mean, he looks solid here at 11-5. We saw him come out against Detroit and put up 50 in 27 minutes, and I think they were winning by like 50 in the first quarter. I mean, he came out on fire. Um, you know, he was doing bad before that, like the f past few, four or five games. So he really wanted to come out and show everyone, hey, I'm Giannis, and he did that. So, yeah, love the honest, even in this tougher matchup against Denver. Uh, Middleton should come off the bench again. He'll be limited in minutes. So, with everyone kind of, you know, priced up, it's really just going to be Giannis and maybe Brooke Lopez for me. He'll see a little bit more minutes because a guy like Bobby Portis is not going to be in. Uh, so, maybe they'll dust off um, Mamu, but I, I don't think they will. They'll just probably go smaller, give more minutes to guys like Giannis, Drew, Middleton. Uh, Brooke Lopez, you know, Allen Connaughton, Ingles, they'll just kind of spread it out. So really it's just be Brooke and the honest for me. Moving on to Washington. Um, you know, Kuzma 
We started off very, very slow that last game, turned it on in the second half. I mean, he should be playing big minutes, but 8,800, I just don't love that price tag, even in this great matchup. Really, really like Brad Beal here. You know, only played 30 minutes, 7 to 17, just really didn't do much. You know, only 22 points, four assists. I mean, he's averaging almost five assists in three over three boards per game. So he lost out on a good amount of points from those rebounds um, and assists there. So I do expect to bounce back here for Brad Beal. You know, his solid upside, he should be aggressive, especially in this matchup. So. Love Brad Beal here against Houston. Uh, Monte Morris, don't mind him. He's a decent contrarian play there. Or excuse me, decent value play there at 5,100. Gafford, I mean, screwed me on prize picks. Dude played 19 minutes, 23 fantasy points, but fouled out. So yeah, if he's going to stay out of foul trouble, I do like him. He's still too cheap there at 4,700. Um, DeLon Wright will split the minutes a point guard with uh, Morris. He's been productive recently, so if you want to chase that, I don't mind it. Uh, he's very reliant on those steals, though. Denny looks a bit too cheap here. Played 32 minutes off the bench. He's a facilitator, as I said. He's not going to shoot the ball a ton, three of five. But he gets to the free throw line. He boards. He assists. He steals. He does all that stuff. So I like Denny a good amount at 4,000 uh, against Houston. That really does it for me on the, the Washington side. I mean, none. Maybe he'll play. Uh, but I, I don't think there's a need to get to him. Kispert, if he starts, you can definitely go to him. But he's very score independent. On to the Houston side. Um, Sengun looks okay. You know, I don't love the price tag, as we saw. Uh, that last game, you know, 38 at massive ownership in 8,400. Uh, I don't love it. His price came up, so he looks okay. Uh, Jalen Green, we know his upside saw it last game, but very, very score independent. So I don't like chasing him, even in a solid matchup here against the the Wizards. Uh, Jamari Smith, is he, if he's back, I do like him a good amount at 5,200. Um, if he's out, once again, we can look to a KJ Martin. Prefer getting to Tari Eason, who had a very, very, very good game there in the starting lineup. Uh, yeah, I mean, this dude's a beast. He's a defensive beast. So if he's going to start again, really, really like him. And that's really going to be it. It's really just going to be Tari Eason for me if he starts. If he doesn't start, maybe KJ Martin and, uh, uh, excuse me, Jabari Smith Jr. So moving on to these last four games. Uh, now we're getting into some game environments that I really, really like to target. Uh, first off, we have Memphis versus Golden State. Should be a great one to watch. A lot of beef between these two teams. So I, I do like Ja a good amount here at 9,700. Uh, another one of those players who really hasn't flashed a huge upside game in like a good amount of time. Like he's gotten to 56, 59, but really hasn't gotten like past 60 yet this season. So I love him to have a huge, huge game here against Golden State, 9,700. I do like Desmond Bain a good amount as well. I mean, he's been having solid upside alongside Ja. So he looks decent at 7,300. Rest of the team, you know, Steven Adams out. I'm assuming they'll start Xavier Tillman. So you can look to him as a value play there. Did play 30 minutes. Now, Golden State does play small, so I'm not sure if they'll look to Xavier Tillman. Maybe he'll only play 15-ish minutes at that price tag, more of like a dart throw value option, but he's definitely there. You know, Santi, maybe you could get a few more minutes. He's scoring a pin at times, but I mean, if it's going to be uh, Tillman starting, I think you can still take a shot on a guy. Where is he? Brandon Clark, 4,400. You know, should come off the bench. He was in massive foul trouble, so he only saw 13 minutes. Didn't really play that last game. But he should be in line for mid twenties, if not more. So I think my favorite play right now is going to be uh, Brandon Clark. Just de dependent on Pond if he starts. If he does, really like him. If he's coming off the bench and they start Tillman, I still think it's viable to go to Clark just because you know Golden State could get skull small and they're going to lean towards Brandon Clark over Tillman. So definitely keep that in mind there. Golden State side, uh, Steph looks solid as it's been a player there at ten five. I don't mind him. Um, you know he'll probably step up in this matchup. Wouldn't be surprised to see him go for like 35 plus. So I do like Steph. Uh, Poole with kind of everyone back. No real need to get to him. I mean, my boy Clay absolutely screwed me here against Boston. 32 fantasy points in the first in the first quarter, or excuse me, in the first half. Finishes with 34 and a half. Like, how is that possible? You play a whole second half, and you don't you don't do anything. You you score two fantasy points in a half. But 6,800, good amount of interest in him in this matchup. Really, really like him. Um, you know, Green, he looks solid as well. So I have a good amount of interest in this game. Uh, you could definitely game stack it. Uh, Wiggins looks very appealing as well here. You know, saw 40 against Boston. Should see mid-30s minutes if it's a close game and he's not playing god-awful. So I do like Wiggins here a good amount as well. So a lot of interest for me in this Golden State side. Moving on to Toronto. Um... You know, a fantastic matchup here. You always want to target, uh, you know, Sacramento, especially with guards. So I do like Siakam a good amount. Fan Fleet looks very, very solid there, 8,100. He's been playing great um, 
the past four games. As you can see, 61, 63, 49, 40. He's been shooting the ball uh, very, very good, especially from three, pretty much 50% or more in the past three games. So, I mean, if you want to ride the hot streak with him, I don't mind it. He looks fantastic there. So there's a good amount of options to here today on the board, all kind of between that like five to like 9K range. So you can definitely spend up for people on the slate, but as of right now, and unless we get some injury news, really, really like targeting just more of a balanced build today. In terms of like the rest of the team, no real standouts for me. If Gary Trent's out, or excuse me, if OG's out, we can look to Gary Trent, Scotty Barnes, but it'd really just still be the main two for me. These two are more secondary plays. Precious, if he's going to start, I think he's a solid value play there. I've mean, had two huge games. Don't know if you can expect him to go for double doubles, especially when he only shoots the ball four times in you know two games, but he looks solid. Boucher is definitely worth a tournament dart throw, uh, especially if OG's out. He should see maybe a few more minutes. He can definitely go off, so I don't mind going to him. There's a, a GPP dart throw. Moving on to Sacramento. Um, not a lot of interest for me in this side. Uh, you know, Sabonis, obviously a great spend up. Fox is just kind of there for me. Um, Herder, always worth a tournament look. Same thing with Malik Monk, but that's really it for me. Not a lot of interest as of right now in Sacramento, Utah. Same thing. It's really just going to be, uh, you know, Clarkson for me. I think Kessler is still at a solid price tag to target him at if he's going to start. And then there's really going to do it for me. I mean, in terms of value, Sexton probably be the best value play. But yeah, Evan's kind of, you know, just there. So not no really standout place for me on the Utah side. Moving on to Portland, uh, Dame, you know, if you want to ride the hot streak with him, he's been great uh, the past like two weeks. So I really like Dame there, 10-3. Especially, if, once again, you want to target Utah. Usually you want to target them with bigs. So Nurkic looks great here going against Utah. Coming off a huge game there against the Spurs. Um, another guy who's been, you know, pretty solid the past month. So I do like Nurk, but there's always that foul trouble risk with him. Uh, super foul prone, but in this matchup against Utah, you really, really, really like, uh, Yusuf Nurkic. Rest of the team just there. Jeremy Grant, uh, I mean, the dude <laughs> had 10 fantasy points, 28 minutes. That's horrible. I do expect to bounce back for him. And then moving on to the last game, Spurs versus the Lakers. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised here if LeBron's rule out on the other side, but we'll get to that in minutes. But yeah. If with no LeBron, this should be a very close game. Keldon Johnson looks decent. Trey Jones looks decent. I still prefer getting to Portal. Uh, you know, his minutes are just a huge question mark with him. If he's going to stay out of foul trouble, he should see close to 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more. Has huge upside. It's just, you know, can he stay out of foul trouble? And will he see the minutes and not get popped? The rest of the team just there. No real standout place for me. Sure, you can get on Collins if you think Portal's going to foul trouble. You can go to Richardson, McDermott. Uh, you know, McDermott had a decent game last game. In terms of just scoring five or seven, but yeah, the Spurs are just gross. Moving on to the Lakers, uh, they just played last night. I do think maybe they'll rest LeBron. Anthony Davis is back as well, so really takes out a lot of interest in this side uh, with Anthony Davis back. Even with him playing fifteen to twenty minutes, he's just going to assume so much usage. Uh, LeBron, if he if he does play, he's still there. So not a lot I like in this Lakers side as of right now. And that's going to do it for the, the slate breakdown, guys. As I said, there's a lot, a lot of good options in that like 5 to 9K range that I kind of talk through. So I'll put it together a player pool based on this video of like the guys I'm really looking to target. And I'll have that all in my free Patreon link down below. So make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.